Welcome back to Making a Difference. Again, this is a show for the youth, by the youth. Yes, youth pa ako. Um, Just to really inspire all the viewers out there watching today. Again, my name is Erica Mison. And if you are just tuning in right now, with me today is Amina from Kids Who Farm. So just a very, very quick background on Kids Who Farm. It is a sh- social startup and an advocacy initiative that was actually started by a 10-year-old. Okay, I think in... Uh, out of all the seasons that I've had so far here and making a difference, that this is the she is the youngest um, founder of the organization, but that's not Amina, that's somebody else. So um, yeah, they they're here to spread awareness and find food security solutions here. Um, well, they're based in Zamboanga, and they also want more young people, uh, us youth, to be involved with farming and agriculture. Um, we have such, you know, bountiful lands. Is that the correct term? Um, so they really want the youth to be involved with farming and agriculture. Because uh, um, Amina showed statistics a while ago, and it said there that the average average age of farmers are 59 years old and that's almost retirement age already so that's why they're here to spread awareness and to get the youth involved so uh before i reintroduce amina we have a question of the day and i've seen a couple of answers already but of course i will read them at the end of the show so if you haven't answered that question yet, I will flash that right now. The question of the day for making a difference is, what do you do to help take care of our environment? Yeah, there you go. Question of the day is, what do you do to help take care of our environment? It can just be a very, very simple answer. It doesn't need to be an essay um, answer or, but if you want to, go ahead, that's fine. I, I don't mind reading it. Um, or it could just be a phrase, a paragraph, oh, sorry, or a, a one sentence answer or two sentences, doesn't really matter. But I just want to know, what do you do to help take care of our environment? Now, the reason why, that's the question of the day. January is actually zero waste month. And that's why we also have kids who farm um, on our show today to commemorate zero waste month so yeah i I just want to know your answers and then of course at the end of the show if you want your comments to be featured comment down below and of course i will read them at the end of this show now i'd like to reintroduce again uh, i'd like to call her back on screen amina halil again she is the core She's part of the core team. <laughs> Hi, Amina. She's part of the core team of Kids Who Farm. And she's also the president of Youth for a Food Secure Future. She's very, um, if you guys missed out on the first half, a uh, first portion of the show, she's very, very lively, very, very energetic. And I love the energy. She's based in Zamboanga, but uh, I, I feel her energy here in Metro Manila. And, that, and that's great. That's it. You can see her usefulness yes usefulness okay so um we ended uh actually me uh we ended with um we were just talking about kid who farm now i'm sure the viewers would want to know what projects you do exactly for kids who farm so i know um may continuation by yung presentation so can we pull that up again please Kasi Kasi mga mga photos, so in total, so in total we already, already were, was able to train 2,000 children, youth, and women. They were trained on urban agriculture technologies, both on face-to-face and both on virtual platforms. So um, before, kasi, um, I was also part, you know, that the story here is that participant lang din talaga ako at first. I was just so sad because 
<laughs> eh, mga parts talaga ng life natin that were, you know, sad, we don't know what to do. We just wanted to divert our attention while doing something productive. I think it was March when I, I saw um, the call for participants of um, the Kids Who Farm. And then I said, mm, yeah, I, I should join. And then I was one of the pioneering batch of um, the Kids Who Farm, urban container farming. And then right now I'm here <laughs> speaking on behalf of Kids Who Farm. And it's really nice and fulfilling for me. I think that's one hell of character development. <laughs> wow, participant ka lang, girl. That was Member. That, that's really great <laughs> congratulations on that <laughs> yes thank you so yeah as you can see here um you can see a, a, a collage of photos so as you may see um here there is like a photo some photos of Raina our founder given talks to the kids yeah I think it's on like the second photo like there um she, she's really an amazing kid like if you talk to her she's full of you she, She's just just like me, full of energy, full of fuel. She's also a joker. <laughs> that's why, you know, she's beaming with passion. That's why kids listen to her. And I think it's important na um the kids feel na may kasama sila sa journey na to. It's not just not, not just old people teaching them parang um this is farming like that. I think they want that th there is someone of their age to speak about um these kinds of issues kasi they will listen ganun kasi ako kahit ako makikinig din ako kapag ano ka-age ko yung ano kasi para lang siyang chika para ganun yung chika tayo or may alam mo ba yung urban container farming girl parang parang ganun so okay. nice, nice approach <laughs> yeah because people tend to don't listen kapag ano pag sabihin mag, mag seminar tayo they're just going to go there for the food nah <laughs> that's right so right now we believe that we make farming fun and easy so that people will go and then Right. Again, we already train 2,000 children, youth, and women on urban urban agriculture technologies, and the family is growing. So, next slide. Okay. So now let's talk about statistics. We all know that the COVID, I think, is among the problems. Natin. I think yung, um the hunger. You know, um, there are a lot of people losing their jobs. A lot of people are not getting enough food, especially yung mga um um people in the lower social economic um spectrum they're ha really having a hard time um having um finding food especially in the uh, enhanced community quarantine times pa natin because they parang you know they they're forced to leave their jobs and then kapag walang trabaho no work no pay unlike um people you uh, know even if they stay home they can still have their food they have cars but you know what? The people in the lower social economic spectrum, they're the ones really badly um, affected because the clock is ticking for the hungry children in the Philippines. So um, people are saying na patay na sa gutom biso COVID-19. That's why a lot of protesters, you know, a lot of young, yeah, yeah, hung, hungry people are going to the streets asking for money, asking for food because they, they really cannot do anything about it. And based on statistics, um, 5.2 million Filipino families experience involuntary hunger at least at least once in the past three months. And 14.2 million um, children are undernourished. And also, 13.0 million families or Filipinos are food insecure Filipinos. That's because um, people, you know, you know you know, hunger is really a problem in the Philippines. And I think it's about time for us to actually don't um, grow our own food to, to, to you know, to um, um, address this issue, the food insecurity issues that we have in the Philippines. And I think like growing your own food in the backyard, growing your own food in your own garden, in idle spaces, that could really help. Because me personally, I have been growing my, my own food right now. I, I started to grow tomatoes, uh, some, some pet shy. And instead of going out and just finding, we just wanted to like, pick it up. <laughs> like, you know, kasi parang, I mean, we make it more accessible to us. Kasi paano pag may pera tayo, pero wala tayong mabilhan? Yun yung, yun yung pinakamalaking problem ngayon. May, may pambili, pero walang mabibili. Yeah, so it's about time for us to actually grow our own food, right? So next slide, please. Okay, so the next question that we have to ask ourselves is that, are we close to our source of food? Okay, going back to the first slide that, 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 I, that I said that, um, Food doesn't come from our food doesn't come from a box. But when we ask kids, kung saan nga magaling, jamal po ata. Minsan may site pa nga sila na specific mall, ganon. Yung biggest mall sa amin, parang din siya. 
suit ganon <laughs> hindi ka <lang> sabi <laughs> ganon parang ang cute yun ba but they're not wrong yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, not. they're not wrong so yeah this photo was taken from one of uh, the local malls in 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 Zamboanga City and then um, the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we close to our source of food? Do we have to go to the grocery stores to buy our vegetables? Do we have to go to our um, to the market to buy spices? What if we can just actually source them out in our backyards, right? Yes. Next. Again, sustainability talaga. Yeah, it's sustainability. It's, it's just the sustainability for advocacy, but also sustainability as a family in terms of the source of food. So... Yeah, so next slide. Okay, so as you can see, there's like a map there. Yeah, that's the that's yes. like one part of Zamboanga City. And okay. those those green flags, not red flags, oh beware of red flags, you know. <laughs> Where else? Where else? Red flags. <laughs> yeah, the only red flag I want is from the chicken joy. <laughs> <laughs> so those are like the, uh, the, the blue green flags. They're um, um, the areas that we, where we have the uh, no, um, where we envision to have the um, the food network. So um, our vision or for the future is that we want to have a youth-led, hyper-local, you know, hyper-local food network. So what is actually a local hyper? Uh, wait, no, uh, hyper-local food network. So um, it is a network of um food it is a food network consisting of actual people like it is like the combination of you know educating people and empowering people you know with a powerful set of tools in terms of farming that turns ordinary cost uh, consumers into actually educated producers right so we also um in, in doing this we also have um, different mechanisms like we don't just want them to learn about urban container farming we don't just want to learn them more we don't just want them to plant because we also want them to um, know how to actually monetize this produce. So next slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so one of our um, one of our um, programs or one of the projects is this is actually in bar one of the barangays in Barangay Tulongatung, Zamboanga City. It is a relocation site for Zamboanga siege victims. So if you heard of the Zamboanga siege, um, it was way back in 2013, and people were displaced. So with this, um, we don't just want to um, inject farming into into them, into their communities, but we also want to empower them. So, sa farm nito, they're already the ones managing it. You see, right now they're doing a community hydroponics where um, they grow their, you know, lettuce on water. That was really amazing, right? They can new one. And then when I when I visited that area, it was the first time I visited the area. I think uh, I think that was last month in December. And then they were so. Um, beaming with passion when 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 they were thought about this uh, the the hydroponics and then there were there were a lot of a lot of questions and I think one important aspect of doing community project is that we don't make them feel that they are beneficiaries but we want them to make them feel that they are partners they are the owners of this project right because people have been telling you know oh beneficiaries namin ganito here are beneficiaries but you know this is what reason why projects don't prosper because we label them as beneficiaries instead of labeling them as partners and owners of their own projects. Okay. Like, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Really? So next, yeah, another picture of our community hydroponics and the uh, Atiwa farm. And you see Ate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next slide. Okay, so this is uh, another one. Uh, this one is not a community food garden, but it's actually a school micro farm project in um, Don Pablo Lorenzo Memorial High School. It is one of like um, one of the biggest um, high schools um, high school in, in the city. And then we all know the Gulayan of Aralan program, right? We all know that. And then you know schools schools really compete for that because parang pagandahan tayo ng gardens, <laughs> And then. With, with the presence of that kind of program that we pushed that we wanted to penetrate we wanted to take advantage of that and then here it is um the school microfarm project so I think signing parang I think the agreement that um actually na siya ngayon. it's being established since last year and then it's still thri it's still thriving and I hopefully it will continue to continuously thrive until the next years. Ang, ang mahirap lang is that because of COVID, parang the students don't get to actually go there to do their own farming like that. Because 
you know, personally me, uh, when I was high school, we also had gulayan sa paralan. I was planting talongs. Wow. Right? wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I became sad because my, my eggs were for small. But <laughs> okay, at least it grew, right? And then, because I, but when I joined Kids to Farm, I learned my lesson. I learned my all my lapses. Why it's small? Why it's not? You know why it's not the, the size that I wanted it to be. And then my tomatoes were also small. Yeah. So, no, because I entered kids farm when I was in college. Na, and then I realized, ah, this palang mga maliko. Ngayon ko lang realize na ito palang mga pagkamaliko. So yon. <laughs> so also in, aside from venturing the community in the communities or community food gardens, we also do school micro farm projects. Yan. So next slide, please. I think there are more photos. Yeah. yeah. The school so micro farm. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, it is one of the um, photos um, uh, in Don Pablo, Lorenzo Memorial High School. It is um, 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 it is one of the like um, school garbage dump site before, like that. But like, it's one of the idle spaces that they don't usually use. And then we try to utilize that space. So the school micro farm, <laughs> micro farm utilizes idle school spaces into production hubs. While teaching students on urban agriculture and agroenterprise, because I think students um don't actually venture sa mga gulayan sa para. Marami kasi to matakas, alam ko. Tante kaya sa akin para ako yung mga to matakas. Jan sa mga high school friends ko, jan ako yung mga to matakas. Alakay ng ate. Alakay ng ate. Yun because parang feeling nila um. They're just doing it for the sake of grades, doing it for the sake of completion. But what if we teach these children and how to venture agro-enterprise and how to monetize their produce, right? Parang, you know, as a kid, if there's money, parang, let's go, let's go, girl. Parang, like, yeah. Let's, it's all about, the, you know, changing the mechanism and making use of the, all of these. Yeah. So, next. Mm. Okay, yeah, another one. Yeah, it's a school microfarm project also in um in it's another school microfarm project where um the hydroponics lettuce is being ano, used. We actually use um you know mga gamit na styro styrofoam. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because one of the no major um um pollutants in the sea is you know styrofoam. So instead of just throwing it out, why not just use it for hydroponics setup? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. use that. Right. Yeah. Next slide. Yeah, and so um, in the school micro farm learning site, what we want to inject or the components are the following sustainable agriculture, urban farming, agro enterprise, and financial literacy. J just like what I'm saying a while ago, parang pag walang pera, hindi kami pupunta. Parang, parang pag walang pagkain, yeah. time, hindi kami pupunta. Okay. <laughs> mga parang it's about time for us to teach these children how to become financial literate while yeah. teaching them urban farming. Yeah. Yes. At an early age, kailangan na yan. Yeah. yeah. No, already. <laughs> yeah, it, it's about time for us to make ipon. Yes, know. you have to make at an early age as much as possible. When you start getting money, save, save, save. Very, very important. Take it from me. <laughs> I start selling lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In this in this photo, you can see our our newest member of the core team, Ramjan uh, Miranda. He is um one of the he is the SK chairman of one of the barangays here in Bumaga City. So he just joined their team. So the one in the black shirt, that has, hi Ramjan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the cap. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one. So hi Ramjan, welcome to the team. You need to call us welcome though. Yeah. So next uh, next. Uh, Ayan. So also, um, we also think that the SK is uh, an important plays an important role in food security solution. Yeah, that's it. So, in Kids to Farm, we believe that partnering with the SK or the Sangguniang Kabataan is not is a vital step. Not only that they provide us with you know the support in terms of institu institutionalizing. 
tongue twister na <laughs> institutionalizing our initiatives, you know, and our projects. But they also provide us with, you know, um, the opportunity to mobilize their youth, you know, in their barangays. Kasi parang sila yung mas nakakilala sa mga barangay nila. Sila yung mga mas nakakilala, sino yung mga active members. And it's about time for us na gamitin natin yung mga energy ng mga youth na to um, sa kanyang barangay. Kasi kami, hindi namin sila kilala. Parang paano na makikilala. Pupulot lang ba kami ng tao doon. Pati, um, you know, they, they're, they're close to their barangay. So it's about time for us to bring these solutions to the barangay level. And one way to do that is to actually partner with the SK. Okay. Yeah. SK, SK talaga. Hmm. They're always the, I don't know, the, the, the bridge. Yeah, they're always the bridge. And hmm. what's fun about this is that um, like, simula kasi siya sa isang barangay, yung, yung, school, yung community food gardens. And then, when people, when other SKs or barangays, so parang, yung ganda naman nun, parang gawin din natin sa barangay natin. Parang, parang, ganun. Parang, they, they, they started to reach out, and then, it, it's so nice just to see the SK helping each other, na parang, pumunta ka ka sa kids farm, parang, they're gonna help you like that. It's nice. so nice to see them empowering other barangays, not doing competitions. It's, it's really nice to see those kinds of collaborations and empowering. Parang, that's what we need right now. Parang hindi tayo pagalingan ng barangay. Parang yun. It, it, it's we need just to amazing. Collaborate talaga. Yes. Yeah. So right now, we already have um, from the uh, different barangays, um, community food gardens from Tumaga, Santa Maria, Divisoria, Sana sa Gusu, Pasanang, Kain Sinunuk, and there is more to come. So, uh, they, they are youth-managed community food gardens. So, we empower the Sangguniang Kabataan to address local food security and sustainable livelihood by providing them actually technical material, technical and material support to SKs to establish their local community food gardens. So, of course, um, ang, 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 ang Kids of Farm kasi we cannot stand alone. So, we also have the city agriculture in helping us um, with the seeds and all and all the materials that we need, right? Thank you so much for that, the city government and city ag. We really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so here is our framework. So our objective is to actually create an access to hyper local food. Um, through um, making the youth participate in food security solutions. So what is our mechanism? Number one, we do um, marketing strategies. We present them the um, production technologies on, you know, mga different fertilizers and stuff like that. Um, and financial literacy. And then people don't want to venture kasi parang una, akala nila na yung sessions namin would be more of parang, um, you know, rocket science. Parang, parang, parang mga the nitrogen and uh, no not <laughs> because we want to make farming fun and easy kasi that's why we 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 wanted to push for um push uh, we want we present the presentation in such a way that it would be fun not only for the adults but also for the kids you know they're really adult and child friendly presentations oh, yeah nice. but anyway, we 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 inject funds we inject different stuff because we want to level level it off and we want to make it fun and then the benefit is that um, we, the food security is addressed, and then there will be income opportunities for the youth and for the communities. Mm -hmm. Again. Okay. So, next slide. And so, this is one of our ongoing projects in Santa Maria. Uh, it's a community food garden. So, th these are spaces that hindi na ginagamit, and parang we feel like, um, what's gamitin natin yun? Ganun. So, yeah. So, I think there are more photos. So, next slide. Yeah, next slide po. Yeah, so in Santa Maria, yeah, that's in Barangay Santa Maria. So it's at the back of a, um, a Bulilit Center. It is 100 square meters approximately. And we have lots with mulch, sacks, and plastic containers. There are also hydroponics. And what um, yung mga crops na meron dun is kangkong, zucchini, eggplant, sitaw, okra, tomato, and carrots. And also we make use of, you know, used tires, yung din na ginagamit, mm -hmm. ganun, and mga... Um, styro, styrofoams and mga plastic cups and all. Yeah. So, ito, um, the one that we saw a while ago was um, land lang. Is this the one now? Is that how yeah. it looks? Parang we, we turned we turn something na hindi na ginagamit, parang garbage sites and um, like that into a thriving one. Nice. Also, sa SK Divisoria, that's also happening. Parang um, it was for, kasi I live in Divisoria. I live okay. near the garden. And then, 
it was it was first parang a dumping site parang walang walang po apan sila and then right now it's beaming with colors with all those colorful tires and such so kudos to ano to Ram John or one of our members of the court because he's the SK chairman for this barangay and he really made this happen like every morning you can see um the community or the community leaders of the Bisoria na parang they're they're watering it the the plots and it's like so amazing so fulfilling <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. Next slide, see. Yeah, and so you can see the colorful one. That's very amazing. Okay, next slide. Yeah. It's also in Santa Maria, the hydroponics, grown lettuce. Okay. Next slide. Yeah. And then right now, we can now sell lettuce for sale. And that's very amazing. Fresh yeah. enough, yeah. Yeah, and then they, they know that this is actually um like fresh grown and then work you know grown by the locals, so that means that it's safe to eat and all. Yes. Ayan, yeah, so next slide, pa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now we want you to imagine what if the youth became at the uh, was out of a forefront of food security solutions in the time of pandemic, right? So, parang, um, think I think that would be. The last slide right now our last slide and this is why you know in the kids to farm we aim to make farming fun and easy because you want the youth to become at the forefront of the food security problems in the time of pandemic so yeah right. thank you so much for listening to me and i think we have the last slide yeah next. there you go ayan thank you so much amina for sharing your projects sobrang amazing ganda ng mga projects and kudos uh, to the sk in Zamboanga City to all the um, SK, actually the SK Federation itself. Congratulations. Uh, and also, Kids Who Farm, you've, you've done a lot to, to help with food security. If you have any questions for Amina about Kids Who Farm, what she does, or anything at all, please comment them down below and we are going to get Amina to answer your questions at the next segment, which we are going to get to in a couple of minutes. We're going to go on break, very, very quick break. And when we come back, we are going to continue to talk to Amina. So we'll see you in a bit.